Hey, we've got an exciting video for you today. We're going to talk about do we recommend Ecuador in 2024 or not? So hang on. Stay tight. We're going to be right back with more. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for being here. This is the first day of 2024. So Happy New Year. So um, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about today whether or not we'd really recommend moving to Ecuador in 2024 and what our recommendations would be there. But first of all, we want to say, hey, thank you for subscribing. And please check, make sure you're still subscribed because sometimes YouTube will unsubscribe you. That mm -hmm. happens a lot. Um, I get, like, people ask me every week here in Vilcabamba, hey, you're still doing videos. Or, well, yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't seen any notices. Well, they probably unsubscribed you. It happens a lot. She got unsubscribed. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so definitely check for us. We appreciate it, and we appreciate it when you share these videos with other people who may have interest in Ecuador and just all things that we do. All things. So uh, do we recommend that? Well, i got to tell you, man. I, I, for one, I think you too, I can probably speak for both of us. I feel so blessed to live in this wonderfully diverse country. As we hear news from around the world and the way things are going these days, we were moved here in the right time, and we still greatly appreciate the blessing that we have of being able to move here. Yeah, this is a great country to live in. I mean, it's not perfect, but no country is. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, this is, and I say it's diverse, it's ecologically diverse. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to tell you a little bit about that today. Uh, first of all, you know, we've got beautiful mountains. You see it in all of our pictures. And mm -hmm. we have a pretty much a year-round growing season where everything's always growing. Except and, more so in the rainy season. <laughs> yeah, right now. <laughs> it's been raining nonstop for three or four days. And yeah. we finally caught a little break yesterday afternoon. So. Yeah. In this morning so far, it's starting to clear off. The clouds are starting to burn off. So maybe we'll get by. But um, everything's growing because of that wonderful rain. It is really, really greening up and just everything, everything blooming is just gorgeous. And of course, we'll show you some of the pictures of the plants and things that we've got growing here on our property. So I want to talk first about birds. Somebody uh, had a comment this morning on the channel about um, why don't we show more birds, you know, there's supposed to be so many different birds in Ecuador. Well, and there are. There's over 1,600 species of birds here in Ecuador, um, and they're finding new species all the time in the Amazon. They're certain that there's bird species they've not even identified there yet. Mm -hmm. So that's an ongoing process. In our area, um, there are certain birds we don't have here, but you can go a little bit south of here, and they've got them. The closer you get to the Amazon, you know, we live in the high Sierras up in the mountains, mm -hmm. so we have a fewer species. We do have the Andean condor, which is the national bird of Ecuador. Quite amazing to watch. Yeah, they fly throughout the valley here. We see them come by our, our house and mm -hmm. just gliding around, you know, hunting. Um, but we have uh, twice as many birds here as in North America, Europe, or Australia. So that gives you some idea of the bird count, and that's including Canada. Um, it's very likely the Ecuadorian jungle has birds that have never before been seen by humans. Um, just to name a few, we mentioned the Andean condor. We've got all kinds of hummingbirds. You know, Lisa and I are working on some hummingbird habitat here. Yeah, hummingbird and bird. I mean, it's really nice since we've moved in. I think we've gotten more different varieties of birds. A few more have come in. And we've got an owl that comes back from time to time. But we're working on getting more of those pictures. Yeah, and we hear that owl from time to time. We're going to figure out how to get pictures of him. Yeah. Um, but we have the macaw here is, is um, not necessarily here on our property, but definitely here in Ecuador. And there's lots of them. There's lovebirds. Um, there are, the, of course, the blue-footed booby. Uh, <laughs> down in the islands, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, the Galapagos. And so that's one of our favorites there. He's a cute bird. So, yeah, there's just all kinds of birds here. And, you know, we're not 
we've never been big bird watchers, but we're becoming that way. Mm -hmm. And we do enjoy photographing them. Definitely enjoy photographing them. Okay, so animals. Animals. There are actually 317 mammal species in Ecuador. Um, Well-known mammals from the rainforest include the jaguar, the ocelot, which I think we have at the zoo, the puma, we definitely have the zoo, armadillo, which I was a little surprised to see, um, sloth, uh, tapir, rare freshwater pink dolphin, the river dolphin. Yeah. So we haven't actually got to see that in person yet, but maybe at some point. There's also um, a lot of different monkeys. Um, a couple of them they have at the zoo. Um, howler monkeys, spider monkeys, wool monkeys, uh, capuchin monkeys. Yeah, and marmosets. They have marmosets too. Yeah, and the speckled bear, which is really cool. Yeah, the speckled bear is in the Podocarpus Park, and uh, so it's not too far from here, you know, 15 kilometers maybe. You can see those up there if you um, are very careful and very quiet, you'll see them. Um, so there's, yeah, there's lots of different things here. You know, we have possums, they, they call them the wanchaka here. Mm -hmm. And so there's things like possums, and we have wild cottontail rabbits here. We do. And we have some quail too. We right have, here on our property. Yep, we've seen those. They wander around. And so fish, yeah. Ecuador has all kinds of fish. Um, about 800 species of freshwater fish here in, you know, the Amazon, some of the river systems here. Of course, everyone knows about tilapia. They're in all the ponds here. Kind of a, a popular eating fish here. Mm -hmm. And there are trout here. We've got, you know, trout in the rivers. Um, there's all kinds of different fish here. And... You know, I I haven't been to the coast, but, you know, there's about 450 species that inhabit the Pacific coast. So uh, since Ecuador does boundary, boundary the Pacific Ocean, we do have those 450 different species there. And you'll see in the fish markets here all kinds of stuff. I mean, sea bass, um, you name it. It's, uh, it's all there. We get salmon all the time here. And uh, so you'll see a lot of salmon in those shops. The All salmon's right. good. Oh, yeah, I think the salmon's really good, really good. Mm -hmm. The um, the river systems here are far more um, nutrient-rich for the fish, so you'll see mm -hmm. a lot more fish in the rivers, and uh, they do well. And that's why you see the pink river dolphin there. Okay, so plants. we got a lot of plants. We have a lot of plants. We did that one video, and we're, it's like everything grows here. I don't know a lot that doesn't grow here. So Ecuador has about 25,000 species of plants and flowers, um, while the whole of North America only has 17,000. Um, new species are discovered every year. I think lately I've been getting into the orchids, and it amazes me all the different varieties of orchids. There's just so many. Yeah, we've got a new one that Lisa has acquired. We'll show you that when it gets big enough. But... Yeah. It, uh, they call it the, the shoe, and when the wind blows, it has got a little mouth inside, and it opens up like it's talking to you, <laughs> yeah. and uh, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Lisa's gotten big in the orchids, so you'll see a lot of orchid pictures coming up of different orchids happening. Yeah. And uh, our local zoo here has a great, you know, I don't know what you call it, orchid area. Yeah, they, they propagate, I guess, and um, maintain a uh, huge, huge number of orchids, just really Thousands. big variety. There's one that looks like a little bitty grape cluster. I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of great uh, orchids growing there. Mm. So, yeah, everything seems to grow here, even cactus. We've got some different varieties of cactus oh, here yeah. on the property. Um, since we're up here in the mountains, it seems to like it. Uh, we just have everything, every kind of dahlia, um, we've got a large selection of dahlias here on our property. We've been moving those around and propagating them a lot. Four or five different kinds of lilies, so lots mm -hmm. of different plants. Yeah. So we have to say we love that about this country, yeah. this diverse ecosystem here, if you will. And again, I mean, you can travel, you know, 10 minutes in any direction, get a little bit different climate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are a lot of the things we really love about this country. We love that it's very inexpensive to live here. 
And we've mentioned before, we love the people here, very nice. But there are some bad things about this country, too. A couple, but, you know, all countries have bad parts, too. Yeah. Here in Vilcabamba, um, if you don't enjoy the wind during the windy season, it gets dry and windy, and, you know, that, that's kind of a downer for me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not a guy who likes wind. So, but that's only, you know, two or three months out of the year, and we're done with that. Well, and it's, some some years are worse than others, just like rainy season. Um, some days are worse than others. We've had a couple of years where we had really strong winds for a week, and we just didn't really want to be out in it. But uh, a week out of a whole year, I mean, it's nothing. So, the, you know, the big elephant in the room right now is the crime in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. And um, it has increased, and particularly in our area, we've seen, um, you know, more home invasions than usual. Mm -hmm. And um, the it, that has not really slowed down. The last week or two, it slowed down because it's raining. Seems mm -hmm. like the criminals right. don't like to get well, wet. Well, it's party time, too. Yeah, I mean, come on, they like right to party. Um, so, yeah, we'll have a lot of parties between... Uh, Christmas and uh, Carnival, which yeah. is like, you know, the 1st of February. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so some of these, you know, criminals have um, really caused a problem here, and uh, the local police are not much help at all. Don't expect them to be any help, and you won't be disappointed <laughs> if you have no expectations. Yeah, it's, it's a different expectation. A lot of people go, well, I'm going to move to the city because... The police are closer to the city and they'll find me uh, not necessarily going to help you that much. No, I wouldn't count on it at all. You have to protect yourself here yeah. you know, rely on yourself as your own security. And we are seeing some stories of some gringos fighting back. Mm -hmm. And um, and so if that reputation gets around, um, that we are protecting ourselves and we are fighting back, then I think that we'll subdue at least on this local level here. Um, there are some cartels in this country who've, who've moved in um, and set up shop, and they do sometimes extort some businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen that, seen some video on that. So that's, you know, that, that's the bad thing. Not sure that that's going to get a whole lot better. No, but ever since we've lived here, I mean, we've always kind of known and then been, I guess, <coughs> confirmed that when um, things get, you know, a little bit crazy where in the U.S. you would expect someone to get arrested or taken away or something like that. Um, like, I think at one point there was a fight in the street between a couple of guys. And the police don't do anything. It's just guys duking it out and, and figuring out who's going to win. Yeah. And they, they just let that happen. It's kind of... Um, in the beginning, it, we called it kind of an indigenous justice. And basically what that means is that you take care of yourself and you take care of your friends. Yeah, the actual indigenous people here will, they do have their own form of justice when it mm -hmm. comes to thievery. Someone in their tribe who, you know, gets caught stealing, they publicly humiliate them, they beat them, um, yeah. strip them down their underwear, and... Um, and then make them do some community service on top of all that. So yeah. there's probably better justice in those communities than there are by the actual police here. Yeah. The police here um, have been known to extort people. Um, we have many friends who've had to pay little, you know, extortion fines, if you will, get pulled over on a highway and, you know, had to pay them 20, 40 bucks to get away. There is some going on between Guayaquil and Cuenca, um, Along some of the highways there, I posted recently a story from a woman who she and her family were extorted by the local police right there on the highway. And um, so, yeah, a couple hundred bucks had to be passed to the police to make that go away. So um, it's never happened to us. We, we did have an opportunity one time where during the pandemic in the very beginning, in order to travel anywhere, you had to have a special document. And we had that document, we had it all ready to go, and I had a doctor's appointment in Cuenca we had to go to. So all the way over there, you know, nine, ten roadblocks all the way over there, and some of them are local police, some of them are transitos, some of them are national police, and some were military. Mm -hmm. And so they really were trying to get people not to move, you know, around the country. 
And so we got all the way over to Cuenca, went to my doctor. We came back the same day. On the way back, we made it all the way through these roadblocks. Then we get to this one military guy. We just come through a roadblock, but yet here's this military guy, army guy, stops us. And he's giving us a hard time about our document. You got to go back to Cuenca. <laughs> and we're going, no, 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 no. We live in Vilcabamba. We have to go back to Vilcabamba. And, you know, this all in my broken Spanish. And he's saying, no, no, you got to go back. He said, I can't go back. The guys at the other roadblock are going to wonder why I just came to and I'm turning around and going back. They're going to arrest me. Yeah. And so finally, I just told him I pulled out my cell phone. I'm going to call my abogado, my lawyer. And that was it. He went, okay, go ahead. Get on out of here. <laughs> so I kind of feel like what he was doing is waiting for us to give him a bribe, to offer a bribe. Yeah. And we didn't. And, you know, my recommendation is have a lawyer relationship with a lawyer and maybe with two in case one is not available by phone. <laughs> Um, and so that seemed to do the trick that day, and that's the only problem we've ever really had. Yeah, you know. and it, I mean, you could you could look at it as extortion. You are definitely in living in a more impoverished country than we came from. Um, the extortion in the U.S. is at a much higher level, and so here it's at a lower level. And when they extort you, it's probably because they're not getting paid. Or they're, you know, they got bills to pay or something like that. When they extort you, it's going to that person. In yep. the U.S., when they extort you, it's just going up the pipeline. So, yeah, and I think, you know, I mean, so the the, the national wage just went up. It mm -hmm. was um, $450 a month was the minimum wage here. It just went up $10 today. So it's yeah. now $460 a month. Yeah. So if you think about some of these police officers at $460 a month, you know, that's not a lot of money. <laughs> and, uh, it you is know, not. they're trying to survive. And um, and the way these families survive here is they all live in one house, you know, eight, nine, ten people in a house and combine their incomes, and that's how they get by. And they get paid by the government. And so if the government's having issues and money doesn't go out, then they don't get paid. And I think during um, COVID, they uh, didn't get paid for a couple of months. Yeah, so they were trying to do some other things. Yeah. So um, there are areas in this country I suggest you do not go to, and that's anything close to the border with uh, Colombia. Uh, you'd be a fool to go up in the no-go zone there. Um, do not travel. I keep saying this. Do not travel from Guayaquil to Cuenca. Um, I, I think that's a bad idea right now. There, now, there are people who tell me all the time, and they respond to my comments and say, oh, well, we went through there with no problem. And, yeah, yeah maybe 10 people come through with no problem, and then two get extorted or robbed. Yeah. They are actually robbing buses. They're, they're pulling entire bus loads over and robbing everyone on the bus, stealing their luggage from underneath the bus, you know. Yeah. Um, so those kind of things are happening. So my suggestion is if you have to fly into Guayaquil Airport, fly to Cuenca, fly up to Quito, and then down here to, you know, and yes, that's going to take a whole nother day and a little more expense, but it's much safer. Yeah, I think the other thing people have done is um, when your flight comes in, don't get on a taxi or a bus and go straight over to Cuenca, because usually it's like late at night. Stay in a hotel there. And right there at the airport. Go the next day so that you're not associated with coming in on the plane. And the stories that I've heard here, you know, a, a friend of mine told me about he and his mother being set up and attacked in Guayaquil by a cab driver, and it was quite a long story to tell, but um, most of the stories I hear are from that area. Um, mm -hmm. Even in Quito, I don't hear a lot of stories from people, even though I know there's a lot of crime yeah. in some sections of Quito. Well, it's a big city. I mean, yeah. you're going to have crime. You're going to have more of the pickpocketing, that kind of thing that goes on in those sure. big cities. So I would say, you know, yeah, that's the big elephant in the room right now. And is it safe? Well, a lot of stuff going on in the U.S. too. Um, yeah. And uh, I got news for you. The police in the U.S. aren't there for you either. <laughs> um, you know, we've called the police before and to our church because we thought we had a threat one time at our church. Someone called in a threat. And 45 minutes later, the sheriff shows up and kind of poo-pooed the situation and so I told him, okay, well, we won't call you next time. We'll handle it ourselves. And uh, I had um, put the entire church through concealed handgun training and got them all licensed. 
And so we were our own security in Texas as well. And the difference is, in the U.S., when you tell the police that, they get quite offended that you would take things into your own, own hands. Here, they go, yes, you need to take things into your own hands. Protect yourself first. Well, you know, there was a, an event over in an area here, the other side of Vilcabamba, where the guy was, you know, being robbed, and he called the Vilcabamba police, and they said, well, we don't have a police car. We can't come. Call Malacatos. <laughs> <laughs> so he had to call the Malacatos police. They came. They actually took his gun away because he didn't have a permit for it. They didn't mm -hmm. take him to jail or anything. They just took his gun away. Yeah. Well, what that really means is somebody got a gun, um, you know. Again, impoverished country, so yeah. expect things to be different. And, you know, nobody went to jail or nothing really happened out of that whole thing. No. Um, and everybody knows who did it, but, yeah, that's just the way it is. Yeah. So if those things are a huge, uh, you know, detraction for you, don't move to Ecuador. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's going to get better. The new president sworn to um, uh, fight those things, and he's got some things he wants to do about that. But yeah. quite frankly, he's tied up right now. Well, all he can do with our energy crisis, and I say our energy crisis, yeah. um, we have a problem with electricity right now. The new plant that they spent all this money on to produce electricity is hydroelectric. And uh, so we didn't have a lot of rain there for a while. We had a pretty big drought. Mm -hmm. So those numbers of the power were down, and the plant just never has produced what it was supposed to produce, built by the Chinese. And I've, I've talked about that in past videos. So there's that's a problem. It's way behind on the maintenance right now. And yeah. there's a lot of things they need to do. So the president's focusing on that. Um, we have not really been without power here, but... Like, we, we went maybe two hours one day. Maybe that was two it. hours, yeah. yeah. It's better than it was when we first moved in. When we first moved in, we were out all day. Yeah. And we, it was nothing to be out all day. Um, so it's gotten better. Yeah, so, you know, if I mean, if that's a, a detriment for you, um, being without power once in a while or without water, yeah, probably don't move here. It's going to happen. Yeah. Um, people in Vilcabamba proper... Um, probably go without water a lot more than we do. Mm. But we do have all these backup water storage systems and things that we put into place. So a lot of times it's out. We don't have any clue it's out. Yeah. We don't even know it. Well, it's the other day you came home and said, like halfway between here and town was without water. And it's like, well, we could be without water, but I don't really know if we are or not. So... All the water for this area comes from the Podocarpus Park up real high, mm -hmm. comes off the river up there. And um, so when it rains real hard, the silt and stuff gets into the filters of yeah. the big tanks that they have, storage tanks up there. And so they have to stop everything, clean out those filters. So sometimes water will be out a half a day because of that, Yeah. Um, just for maintenance. And they try to, they try not to do it during the busiest peak watering time during the day. So, I mean, they're very conscientious about um, trying not to uh, make it too bad on, on individuals. Yeah, so um, that's bad. Um, obviously, uh, you know, having your water and electricity out and the crime problems, uh, you know, maybe a reason why you wouldn't want to move to Ecuador. Mm -hmm. I think that it's still very affordable from a visa standpoint. Yeah. Um, you know, they did raise the amount that you had to prove an in income, but I think they brought that back down a little bit. Don't take my word for it. <laughs> Research that. Call Isabel Mascara. She'll um, set you straight on exactly what's what these days. Um, there's some people here who can't make the visa requirements, so they live here for six months on the tourist visa mm -hmm. and then live somewhere else for six months and then come back here for six months. Yeah. You know, so that's a workaround for some people. And, and I would advise that that's a great thing to do. If you live here six months on a tourist visa, you kinda, you're kind of going to know whether or not this country is right for you. Oh, I don't know. I think you have to go through a whole year. So if you do it the first six months, one year, do it the second six months the next year, and that way you get a better view of things. Whatever you do, please heed this. Do not come here for a retreat and buy property your first time here. Oh, uh, we have heard so so many horror stories of 
people, and we've heard a lot of stories, people are buying sight unseen. That's very dangerous. And people are having a lot of problems. There's yeah. so many differences in the law here. And, you know, things like right of passage, um, people have a right of passage right outside our gate right here. There's mm. a, 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 an ancient trail. We can't block that off. People no. can walk by here anytime they want. And we knew that from the first time we stepped foot in Ecuador and we went out and looked at property, we had an agent who was really honest with us and said, yeah. And we asked, what are these people doing walking down to this property we're looking at? Yeah. He said, oh, well, a lot of properties here, they have right of passage. They, they can walk across your property and there's nothing you can do about it. You're not yeah. allowed to fence that off. No, and part of that is because indigenous communities live up in the upper areas of the mountains. And if you buy something midstream down and you happen to be in the pathway, you cannot block that pathway. You have That's to continue right. to let them continue to use their path that they've been taking all their lives, probably. And you are not going to understand a lot of these laws and a lot of these little idiosyncrasies, if you will, about the culture here until you live here a while. Yeah. Um, so please don't buy a property that way. Um, it makes people unhappy. You go yeah. away unhappy. You talk bad about Ecuador. When in fact, it's your fault. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I don't mean to put, put it all at your feet, but really heed this warning. Don't buy property sight unseen. Don't buy property here on a visit. Wait a while. Check yeah. things out. Be sure an area is really where you want to live. It's, there's a lot of places here in Ecuador I'm so glad we didn't buy. Yeah, when we were looking, there were some really nice areas, and uh, our realtor says, eh, that's like a, a Lohano weekend place. So all week long, it's going to be peaceful. But during the weekend, you won't get any sleep because they're going to party all weekend because that's their weekend place. And we've heard stories even since then with people that have bought pieces of property. And when it comes to party time, they almost can't even stay on the property or in their house because it is so loud. And, I mean, they'll invite you to the party if you like to party, but uh, they're not going to stop. I mean, that's it's culturally, that's just the way it is. There's a church down the mountain here, probably, you know, three or four kilometers down the mountain. Mm. And they party down there the other day. They had the music going 24 hours. I mean, it never shut off. No, and, and it was on last night, too. I could yeah. hear it last night. And the fireworks. Um, so it's really important that you know more about the culture before you buy your property and what's around it. And And there's a lot of people that have said, yeah, we bought some property, but the neighbors evidently were farming on it. And so even after we moved on to the property, they thought they could continue to farm. Oh, yeah. Sir. No. What are you doing, you little alien? So, um, yeah, that's, you know, that's a detriment here. If you're not into the noise and stuff, yeah. there's a lot of noisy areas in Ecuador. There's some real nice, quiet, peaceful places. But there are, you know, the chickens, the dogs, the street dogs. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, you've heard it on our interviews. Everybody experiences the same things. Um, so would we recommend it for 2024? I think we still recommend it yeah. with an asterisk. Well, <laughs> really, you really need to do your homework. Um, things are much, much different here than they are from where you're coming from. And, uh, you know. Check it out first. Really check it out. Yeah, for us, I mean, I, I probably would still make the move if we were moving this year ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's probably other countries I'd look at. Uruguay is something that's been on the radar a bit. Um, Uruguay is not going to be great for some people because there may not be enough there to do. They have one major city there that's uh, called Montevideo. And it is uh, about a little over 3 million people in that city. And then there's a lot of just outlying land. There's not much public land there. Nice beaches. And um, it's going to be, you know, a nice place to live. Um, you know, you hear a lot about Uruguayan beef. And some people say, eh, it's not that great. Uh, other people like it. Um, your pricing, your minimum wage is twice what it is here in Ecuador. 
So that's probably an indicator that it's going to be a little bit more expensive to live there. Mm -hmm. um, you would have to check that out. Lots of videos on YouTube about Uruguay. Um, I would suggest a visit. Going to be even harder to get to than Ecuador. Yeah. Um, longer flight. You know, you're going to have to make some more connections. And they say most of the people live in that one city. So. Yes. And so that means there's not a lot of flights in and out. That's um, right. Of Uruguay. Yeah. You're going to have to, um, you know, plan your trip accordingly. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of uh, little countries to go and visit. So we're still figuring this one out. And with our photo group, we're starting to travel around a little bit more and taking more pictures of different areas. So um, there's plenty for us to investigate here. Yeah. And our six-month anniversary is this month. Uh, six years, year, rather. <laughs> we'll have been here six years. Yeah. And um, so, you know, we're still very happy, very content living here. And like Lisa said, um, we're going to be doing a lot of photos coming out soon, a lot mm. of videos. Uh, we were scheduled to go to Palanda this last week, and it was raining so hard that, you know, the roads were a little dangerous. I was feeling under the weather. So we decided to put that off, and maybe we'll go this Thursday. Yeah. Going to go to a hummingbird sanctuary, mm -hmm. and uh, also go to the, the birthplace of chocolate. Yes. So um, everybody needs to go to the birthplace of chocolate. That's right. So uh, we'll we'll teach you about cacao and where chocolate comes from, and yep. So that's going to be upcoming soon. So that's our recommendation. Yeah, we still go for Ecuador um, with an asterisk. Yeah. Uh, we, we reserve the right to change that opinion based on what happens with the new president, the crime, yeah. the different things. Right now, you know, we're still pretty positive about it. Yeah. We're probably 98%. Okay. Well, hope this video was uh, good information for you. Hope you enjoyed all the photographs we, we've uh, placed up there for you. And hope you'll pass this video on to someone who deserves it. Ciao for now. Hey, thanks for watching our video. Please like, subscribe, and share.